We'll do it on the lower. Molar's here, bunch of teeth here, lateral and central here. The wire is here. You make the bend just like that. 45 degree bend pointing down. That's a tip back. Now, you need a long segment and a short segment for this to work. And we'll talk about the, the mechanics of this a little bit later. Um, if this tooth was bracketed here, this would not be a long and short segment. The, the, the definition of segment is the amount of wire between where the tooth is engaged and where the bend is. So here, there's a short segment because there's not a lot of wire before where the tooth is engaged. There's a long segment here because there's a lot of wire. So we have our tip back bends are right here. There's four of them in this case right here. We have a short segment and we have a long segment. Everybody understand that? What if the teeth were all bracketed? Well, you have one of two choices. You can either take the brackets off or make a utility arch type bend around there, which does nothing as far as mechanics, but it, it allows you to have a long and short segment of wire. So we tip those back. We tip them back with a tweed loop forming plier right in the mouth, and I'll show you a video. And there he is, a couple months later, that bites open. Piece of cake. Just not a problem. Not a problem whatsoever. From there to there. Not a problem. It's so easy, it's not even funny. Yes? Can you say that again about a long and a short second? I, I, I'm going to be showing that over and over again. So, uh, not right now, but in about a minute. Okay? Now, this has a long and short segment because the distance between the bend and this bracket is a lot less, that's a short segment, than the distance between the bend and this bracket. If there was a tooth here, it would, there would not be a long and a short segment. You understand that? And I'll show you a slide illustrating that in a minute. But now, we're going to ask four questions. First question is, what direction of force Intrusive or extrusive will be exerted on the molar. Write down the answer. Don't say anything. Extrusive. I or E. Just write it down. Write it down. Intrusive. What direction of force will be exerted on the canine? Extrusive. I. Okay. Let's look at another situation. What direction of force will be exerted on the molar? What's ex exerted on the canine? Hopefully, you answered both questions the same because it's the same wire. I just put it in differently. So how the heck can you figure this out? It's just like I got to move the root to the distal, distal gingival angulation of the bracket. You got to repeat that about 100 times and pretty soon you figure it out and then it becomes part of your mindset so you can do it. So we've got a long and short segment arch wire rule. So let's talk about the off-center bend rule. When the short segment of a wire is placed into the bracket first, short segment is placed in first, the long segment will point in the direction of force produced at the opposite bracket. So the short segment is inserted first, the long segment points this way, so this is going to go this way. Got it? I have a yeah. So the bench is right on the back um, position, not right in the middle. Of the it, it, it doesn't matter. Okay. It, 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 all you need is a long and a short segment. The closer, the, the, the more, the longer you can, the bigger difference between the long and short segment size, the bigger the force differential is going to be. But we'll get into that later. If the long section is placed in first, the short segment points in the opposite direction produced at that bracket. So that's pointing down, that tooth's going to go up. Net effect of the off-center bend. Extrusion and distalization of short segment, usually the molar. Extrusion and distalization of the molar. Intrusion of the long segment. Usually the incisor. When a person has a 9 or 10 millimeter deep bite, are they strong or weak muscle? Strong muscle. Big forces here, right? 
You got an extrusive force on the molar, an intrusive force on the incisor. The extrusive force on the molar is button up against these heavy, big masseters. Do you think those molars extrude very much? No. No. Think the incisors intrude a lot? Yes. That's what happens. So what I do, my typical intrusion setup, a two by four setup, two molars and four incisors are bracketed. We put a tip back mesial to the molar. An 016 stainless steel wire, 16 millimeters into the vestibule. That to be about a 45 degree bend. Gives you 100 grams of force. Lots of people say they think 25 grams of force is the best force for intrusion. Well, you got four teeth. When you say 16 millimeter, you measure the incisor of the canine all the way to the vestibule? Just like I'm measuring the rocking chair curve. So I let the sit thing sit passively. This is, I probably should change this slide. It's probably 16 millimeters from the, from the uh, gingival margin. But the point is the wire has to go up into the vestibule. Do you use a jump to curve the, the wire or just a Sweet loop former. For, for a tip back bend? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm going to show, show you that. I mean, 16 millimeter into the vestibule on passive, you don't curve anything. No, it, it's, it's just the bend. I'm, I'm, it, we're, we're, the video will, will really help you. Side effects, molar extrusion, muscle strength usually prevents it. Anterior teeth flaring. An intrusive force causes what? The side effect of labial movement, doesn't it? The greater the distance between the point of force application and the tooth center of resistance, the more flaring that will occur. What the heck does that mean? We don't care about molar extrusion. We care about flaring. The formula for this has got a cube root in it, so it's the power of nine. So if, if you can get that point of force application closer to the center of resistance, and now this whole way I present this breaks down because we should have talked about this, but we're not talking about it until later, um, you can eliminate some flaring. Okay, so here's what happens. And this is kind of intuitive right now. If this tooth is flared, and you put this wire in, and it goes, what's going to happen to that tooth? Understand that? Yeah. If this tooth is upright, and you put this in, what's going to happen to that tooth? It's not going to flare as much, right? Because when the tooth is upright, the point of force application is closer to the center of resistance. We're going to talk about all the center of resistance, center of rotation. I'm going to really blow you away this afternoon. We'll leave you guys shaking your heads for a month. But you know, that's the way it goes. Um, so the bottom line is flared teeth tend to flare more. So if you're going to intrude teeth, you have to be very careful if they're already flared. If the teeth are already upright, you, you want them to flare. So the mechanics you can use just as is. Bottom line, flared teeth tend to flare more. Upright teeth tend to flare less. Most deep bites have teeth that are upright, so excess flaring is not a problem. In the rare cases where intrusion is needed on a flared tooth, caution must be exercised. Do, do you uh, change the bracket position? To We're going to talk about that. Good point. See, you're thinking. That's what we like. It's a good point. He asked you to change the bracket position, and that's a good way to do it, right? If on a flared tooth, if you put the bracket in sizely like you normally would, you got your point of force application closer to the center of resistance. You put the bracket up more gingival, you're closer to the center of resistance, so you'd have less flaring, wouldn't you? That's the way. That's good. See, that's the kind of stuff you want to be, you want to be thinking about this stuff, not looking for a cookbook answer. <laughs>